get committed to what we're doing, what are we doing? Be involved. Next, you speak the word over the situation, which means you're going to have to grow in a relationship with the word. You're going to have to develop a prayer life. The church was birthed out of prayer. Go read the book of Acts and notice how the church handled business. They prayed about it. And then you have to have a heart of thanksgiving. When you done talk to God about it, start thanking him about it. Don't complain. Don't complain. Say, don't complain. Faith and complaining don't go together. You can't say, I'm healed, and then complain about the, the issue. Amen? You can't say, I love these people, and then go right behind their back and talk about it. You just, nu- you just made null and void what you say. You shut God out of the situation. You catch what I'm saying? When you speak faith, you put God in it. And now that God is in it, he becomes responsible for your success. Amen? But when I begin to put my mouth against what God said, I put my own self in a position of creating success. And we're not going to be able to do that. We're not. We're not. So we got to do this thing by faith. So something's going to have to happen to this flesh. Let's keep going. Stay at that computer, son. Go back one. Help him. Go help him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Let me get Colossians up there. Notice this. If ye then be risen with Christ. Go back. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. Somebody say dead. Dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Stop. Now, notice what it says. If, that's posing something. If ye then be risen with Christ. That means you got to be born again. For this to work, you got to be born again. The kingdom is not going to operate without being born again. My sister says it all the time. She talks about it this Wednesday in her class. You must be born again. If you want to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. So if you are born again, then you are risen with Christ. Now, what did I say Christ did? Christ died on the cross. And what did Christ nail to that cross? The flesh, right? So if Christ nailed it to the cross and I believe in Christ and I'm risen with him without that flesh issue, seek those things that are above because you are now a spirit being alive to God. It says set your affections. That means to gauge your aim. Set your opinions on things in heaven, not on things on earth. For ye are what? Dead. You died on that cross to your flesh. Say, I died on the cross to my flesh. So what does that mean about my feelings? I died to my feelings. Somebody hurts your feelings? Give it to God. Don't open up your mouth and start talking about them, beating them up with your mouth, cussing them out, kicking them out your life, all that. Give them back to God. And you move on with your life. Got it? Because feelings will run you in the ground. The minute somebody hits you with something, because they're going to come. He said, offenses will come. Folk going to say stuff and they're going to do stuff, whether they knew they did it or not. Your responsibility is not to react, but to respond. Reaction acts back on what was acted against him. Notice the word, react. I'm doing the action that was committed against me. You punch me, I'm going to punch you in the face. You cuss me, I'm going to cuss you worse. You talk about my mama, your mama is something else. But a responder already had an answer before the action happened. I know we always use Rick, so come on up here, Rick. Come on up here. Come on up here. This is the man right here, y'all. He is known as a first responder, right? Something going on at your house, he probably be one of the first people you see. In that big old red truck? Now you gonna you in your, you in your car. Yeah, he drive his red truck and his car. Sometimes he riding in a car, y'all. He, he been elevated, y'all. He been elevated. God is good to him. But look, though. 
when you call him, he is known as a first responder. He doesn't come to the scene trying to figure out what to do. He already has pre-programmed things that he knows to do based on what he sees. If I see a fire, he knows how to respond to that, don't you? You know where to look and stuff like that. And once it's all said and done, you can probably figure out where the fire started, can't you? He know how the fire started, where it started, and who did that. Because he's been trained to respond to that type of issue. Now, you've been given the spirit of truth. He leads you and he guides you into all truth. And you have no need for a man to teach you because the spirit will teach you all things. So what about people that offend you? The spirit will teach you how to respond to offenders. Amen? So that means I have no reason to just react to everything. I need to become mature and responsible, build a relationship with the spirit, and become a responder to the things that attack me. And your best response as a believer is in your mouth. The power of life is in you. You want to put out the fires of your life? Speak the water of the word of God and put them out. This is good preaching, brother. I'm telling you what. But this is a first responder. So when he gets to the scene, if a person is laid out in the floor, that's not a fire, is it? Well, dog, you a fireman. Well, he thought all you did was fires. No, he got to respond to that person on the ground, don't he? He got to figure out what the issue is. So that means he's been trained for that moment. He's not reacting to the moment. He's responding to the moment. I know what to do. I got the tools to do it. Do the job. Thank you, sir. Some of us are looking at our issues and we're complaining about them. We're complaining about what's wrong. Why isn't this not working for me? No, you got the tools in you to fix it. Don't call everybody. Call Jesus. Sometimes you got to tell friends, I ain't telling you about this. Because everybody don't need to know. Facebook don't need to know everything about you. Snapchat don't need to know about you. Instagram don't need to know about you. They don't need to know how bad your day was because everybody ain't speaking life into you. Some people are promoting your destruction. Well, I feel the same way, homie. I'd do it too if I was you. No, 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 no. You don't need those kind of friends in your life. You need people that's going to help you grow in your faith. Who's going to build you up? When you're talking crazy, they correct you. You might not like it, but they need to correct you. When you don't like it, understand that's your flesh rearing up because your flesh don't want to be corrected. Your flesh want to deal in this pity party. I want to feel bad, let me feel bad. And don't say nothing to me about it. If I tell you, just let me be bad. No, but love corrects. It speaks the truth in love. So if you're wrong, you're wrong. Accept it, deal with it, and let the Holy Spirit heal you from it. Talking to the mature church of Jesus Christ, right? Amen, 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 amen. Let's keep going. I died to all of that. So I set my affections. Look what it says. It says mortify. Somebody say mortify. Mortify, mortify therefore. He got a little jump on you, don't he? He's jumping on my wife too. I apologize, Reuben. I was wrong. Excuse me, sir. I apologize. That was not your fault. Forgive me. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. What does it mean to mortify? It means to put to death. That's the job we got to do. We got to put to death this flesh. I'm not going to be ruled by my feelings no more. I'm not going to be dictated by what other people do to me. I'm going to live in my spirit. Everybody say, I'm going to live in my spirit. Because people are going to hurt my feelings. Go ahead and say that. Go ahead. People are going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to see stuff on the news I didn't want to see. Because sometimes it ain't just people around you. Sometimes you see stuff on TV that hurts you. When you see people getting killed aimlessly, God, that should not be. Why are these people dying? That will get you upset. These stupid people, these stupid people, I tell you, boy, what are we going to do with these people, God? 
uh, get them saved. That's what God say, get them saved. So stop complaining about them and go save them. Amen? But you can't think about salvation when you got upset, frustrated minds, and you all, every time you look at everybody, they the problem, why the world going in the tizzy that it is. No, they are a solution. They need to be shown that they are a solution. You're a solution. You're a solution. You just don't know it yet. Amen? But he says, mortify, put to death, therefore the members which are upon the earth. What are those things? Fornication. Let's talk about them. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. What is evil concupiscence? Y'all saying, what in the world is that? I don't know what that is. That are evil, strong desires, evil, strong sexual desires. That's what it is. Pornography, adultery. Yep, all that stuff. It's wrapped up in that. It's idolatry. Why? Because you are putting that as a pleasure above God. You're saying the only way I can fix my problem is through pornography. The only way I can fix my problem is through a drug. The only way I can fix my problem is through having another person in my life or having money or having this. Those are the lusts of the world. Is everybody catching what I'm saying? And these things are usually promoted when you get disappointed. When a person gets disappointed, that's when they fall into these the most. Or when they're idle. When you don't have anything to do. Idle time is the devil's playground. My grandma used to say, well, idle time is the devil's playground. Why? Because you don't have anything on your mind. That's why I said set your affections on things above. Because God can always have something for you to do. <laughs> But when you don't have nothing to do, you give yourself over to these things. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in that which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Now notice what it says. It says the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now this can be thrown into so many tizzies, so let's, talk, let's go ahead and put it on out there, okay? God is not killing people, okay? God is not killing people. God's wrath is what he has already spoken concerning disobedience. Is everybody with me? Deuteronomy 28, when he speaks about the blessings and the curses, he tells you about it. Ma Romans 1, when you read Romans 1, he tells you what happens to the children of disobedience. When you don't obey God, he gives you over to a reprobate mind, a dark mind who has no conscience of the life of of God. And when you get a reprobate mind that has no conscience of the life of God, you begin to pursue evil lusts. Men begin to sleep with men. Women begin to sleep with women. We don't need men and women sleeping with the same sex. Man's supposed to be with a woman. Amen, church. Don't get that confused and don't let nobody talk you out of that. A family is a man and a woman. The men's bathroom is for men. The women's bathroom is for women. It's not for men who think they're women. It's not for women who think they're men. Now, I don't have anything against people, but I have everything against the spirit of homosexuality. Are you capturing what I'm saying? People can be delivered of homosexuality. That's a spirit. Perversion is a spirit. It's not the person. So as a people, we don't judge anything according to the flesh. We judge it according to the spirit. So when I look at the person who's battling it, I don't beat them up. I speak to the issue. Is everybody with me? That's what we do as people of God. We become discerners of the thoughts and the intents of God. God wants them delivered from that because that's destroying their life. They're not living a life that pleases God, so therefore they're not receiving the gifts of God. Everybody with me? That's your stance. Amen? Think about it. Lock it in. Talk about it. Because the world is getting darker and darker, and people are doing crazier and crazier stuff, and folk going to look at you and say, what you think? And he said, you're supposed to have an answer for the hope that lies within you. I don't agree with it. I don't hate the people, but I hate the spirit that they are of. So in order for us to do that, we got to do something with our own flesh. You got to do something with your own flesh. 
Because your flesh can want to real, but say, you know what I think? I think they ought to, oh, shut up, be quiet, before you open up your mouth and destroy the whole situation, search your heart. Amen? But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, talking crazy, you need to get rid of it. This is something that God is telling you to work on. I've given you a pure heart. I've given you the words to say. Now, you got to get that filthy stuff out of your mouth. Because I want you to live a life of glory and virtue. But you're going to stop yourself from living in glory and virtue with a filthy mouth. Amen. What does it say about youthful lust? You're supposed to flee youthful lust. Get away from it. If you know you're in a situation that you can't handle, get out the room. Simple, ain't it? If I know I'm talking to somebody who's going to get me in my feelings, leave. It's better to love them from a distance than sit in a room and get all frustrated and let that thing boil over to the point you cuss them out. And then you and God sitting there talking about it because you feel bad. Get out of the room. Amen. Lie not, lie not to one another. Stop lying to each other. You know, some people just like to lie just to lie for the sake of lying. Like, you didn't even have to lie about that. I asked you a question, and you just blatantly lied. I know you're lying because I was there. That's the world. That's the only way they know how to get things done. Lie, steal, and cheat. But this is not the way of God. You got to trust God for life. Amen? That's what faith does. It trusts God for life. And as you get to know God, and as you get to know Christ, you get empowered by the Holy Spirit to walk and live right. That's called holiness. He said, without holiness, no man shall do what? You ain't going to see God without holiness, because God is holy. God is not going to appear at your flesh. Amen? No man shall glory in the flesh. Listen to what I'm saying. No man shall do what? Glory in the flesh. So we've got to put to death some of these things. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> I told you I wasn't going to get this finished. And have put on the new man. Said, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, when did you put off the old man with his deeds? When you came to Christ. Remember, because Christ did what to the flesh? And if you be in him, you nail yours to the cross. So don't go back to feeling and living by your feelings. Amen? We got to stay in faith in Christ. So we put off this old man, which is the job we got to do, and we do what? We put on the new man who is Christ, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. Amen? Amen? We've taken off the old man, this flesh. We got to die to our, help me, die to our, die to our, die to our, die to our. So when somebody get on your nerves, you need to die to your. When you want to cut somebody out, you need to die to your. When your brother or your sister do something against you, you need to die to your. When you don't feel like walking in love that day, you need to die to your. When your heart says, let them go, forgive them, you need to let die to your. When you won't wake up and complain about your job on Monday, you need to die to your. When children start acting up and doing stuff you told them not to do, you need to die to your. Because your children are children of God too. And the words you speak into their life go further than that day. They carry eternity. So if you're going to beat them up with your words, close your mouth. If you're going to beat somebody else up with your words, close your Keep your peace. Keep your peace. Die to yourself. I didn't get to my other, my other scripture, but Jesus said if a man wants to follow me, he must put on his cross and 
follow me. Now, I told you what he did on the cross. He did what? He died to the flesh. So every day you wake up, you got to wake up and say, I'm dying to what I want, what I think I need. And I'm, rely, I'm relying on God for the life he's given me. Because glory and virtue comes with that life. Destruction and damnation comes with the other one. Amen? Put on Christ. Put my last verse up there. There it is. Now then, somebody help me say this with me on three. One, two, three. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. When you wake up every day, you tell your feelings to get in line. You tell your mind to get in line. We're not going to be all emotional today. We're not going to get in a tizzy today. We're going to walk in love today. We're going to walk in forgiveness today. I'm a good work waiting to happen. I'm going to bless the lives of those who come in contact with me because I am a blessing. I'm not going to be offended. Amen? Crucify it. Crucify it. Crucify it and be free. Somebody give God praise. Crucify it and be free. Crucify it and be free. Crucify it and be free. God is elevating us. He's promoting us. And because he's promoting us, there's something we got to do to prepare ourselves to go to that next level. We can't rely on our senses to get us there. We can't rely on our feelings to get us there because those things will set us back. We got to be people who live above them. We are a loving people who love unconditionally. And we're going to overcome this flesh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. the scripture said if he be in Christ which poses the question if you're saved or not you must be born again the only way you're going to overcome this life the only way you're going to get past all the frustration all the weariness all the fatigue all the tiredness all the up and down you're going to have to come into this relationship and just rely on him you got to yield yourself to him and say, God, I give up. I done come to the end of my rope. I done tried everything I think I could try. And every time I do it, I come up short. For the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But in Christ, we measure up. In Christ, we meet the goal. In Christ, we meet the standard. So I want to invite you, if you have not made Jesus Lord in your life, or if there's things in your life that you've kind of walked away from, you say, God, I, I, I walked away from this, and I, I haven't committed myself totally to you. I haven't committed myself totally to your word, and I've allowed these issues in my life to override who I am. I want to give you the opportunity to come forward. Don't be ashamed. We're not going to beat you up, because everyone has come through something to be at the place where they are today. Nobody arrived there by just arriving. There's a process to everything. And we want to pray with you. If you are not saved, we want to make sure that you leave with the life of Christ so that you can be healed. 